the regular meeting of the Enfield Town Council. It is Tuesday, February 21st, 2012, 7 p.m. Uh, thank you for being here with us this evening. First item on the agenda uh, is our prayer and uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd ask everyone in the audience to please stand for the prayer and the pledge. Heavenly Father, we pray that our work as public servants will reflect commitment to duty, consideration of others before ourselves, and that we uphold the benefit of all, especially the most forgotten. We further ask you to give us wisdom and that we listen and heed all of your gifts. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And may we have roll call, please. Councilman Crawley. Councilman Edgar. Here. Councilman Hall. Here. Mayor Copen. Here. Councilman Kinsler. Here. Councilman Lee. Councilman Mangini. Here. Deputy Mayor Nelson. Here. Councilman Stokes. Councilman Arnone. Here. <coughs> Councilman Bosco. Here. We have eight members present, three are absent. For our fire evacuation announcement, in the event that the fire alarm sounds here at Town Hall, I remind everyone in the audience that we need to uh, evacuate the building. Uh, the closest exit would be to the rear of Council Chambers and out to the front of Town Hall. But if you choose to go out the door to your right or left, we ask that you take the back stairs uh, to the back side of Town Hall and out to the parking lot. Minutes of the preceding meetings, uh, there are two. First would be the regular meeting of February 6, 2012. So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved by Deputy Mayor Nelson, seconded by Councilman Mangini. Any discussion? Sensing none, by a show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention. And we have this, the, um, did I say regular meeting first? I did. Okay. Yep. Uh, then we have the special meeting of February 6, 2012. So, so moved. Moved by Second. Councilman Mangini, seconded by Deputy Mayor Nelson. Any discussion? <coughs> Sensing none, show of hands. All those in favor? Those opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention. Are you abstaining? Yeah, I, I think two, abstain two, two abstentions. We have one, two, three, four, and enough to pass. Okay. Next item on the agenda is our special guest section of the agenda. And first, I would like to call forward Jean Robinson from the Daughters of the American Revolution. <coughs> Welcome, Jean. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Copen and town council members, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak about the American Daughters of the Revolution and our local chapter in Enfield known as the Penelope Terry Abbey Chapter. We are a nonprofit, non political, volunteer service organization of women who care about fostering good citizenship want to honor their ancestors, are devoted to educating our youth, and want to preserve our past for future generations. Any woman, regardless of race, religion, or ethnicity, aged 18 or above, may become a member by proving she is a descendant of someone who contributed to the American Revolutionary cause. In many cases, a patriot ancestor would appear about eight generations back, which creates the possibility of having at least one out of 128 ancestors qualify. Few people realize that today the DAR has 170,000 members across the U.S. and chapters in 11 foreign countries. 
Since its creation in 1898, the DAR has had over 900,000 members. Our national headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just two blocks from the White House. Our beautiful <coughs> Constitution Hall, Memorial Hall, Museum, and world-renowned genealogy library were all built, funded, and maintained by women. The DAR library is the second largest genealogical research center in the world, surpassed only by the Latter-day Saints Library in Salt Lake City, Utah. To highlight only a few of our many national projects, we support six special schools for underprivileged, abused, and special needs children with annual donations exceeding $1 million. Each year, $150,000 is awarded in scholarships and financial aid to high school seniors, undergraduate, and graduate students. Since 2005, we have sent the Wounded Warriors Project at Landstuhl Medical Facility in Germany over 23,000 60-minute phone cards, 500 gym bags stocked with personal care items, over 50,000 holiday cards, 250 winter coats, 500 pairs of breakaway sweatpants, 500 crew neck sweatshirts, and 300 pairs of athletic shoes for the wounded military personnel at the hospital, as well as checks totaling $40,000 in cash. Our members contribute more than 55,000 hours annually as volunteers at veteran facilities. The DAR has given more than 10 million free copies of the DAR Manual for Citizenship to immigrants studying for naturalization. Locally, our chapter has been an Enfield institution since 1922. We are one of 42 chapters in Connecticut and among 2,500 state members. This month, our chapter is celebrating its 90th anniversary. We currently have 46 members, ranging in age from 22 to 94. Our local members represent an eclectic mixture of backgrounds and talents, women who are at home with small youngsters, women with careers, and retirees. Four of our ladies are military veterans. As you can gather, we no longer wear our hats, gloves, pearls, and drink tea, <laughs> unless it is a special occasion. Yes, we are those ladies wearing the colonial costumes in the Independence Day Parade. In Enfield, our chapter supports national efforts as well as local community projects, such as the Good Citizens Awards, recognition of the anniversary of the Constitution, and contributing to Stand Down Day at the Rocky Hill State Veterans Home. Through the Overseas Coupon Program for Military Families, we have sent over $50,000 worth of manufacturer's coupons to military bases overseas to help aid the families that are um, stationed with um, their spouses. We also initiated the Reeds Across America movement in Enfield in 2008. In recent years, our meetings were held at the major Nathaniel Terry Chilson House on Post Office Road, which is owned by the Martha A. Parsons Memorial Trust. Ms. Parsons was one of our chapter's charter members. In 2011, we moved to the Hazardville United Methodist Church which graciously allows us to hold meetings in the social hall the second Saturday of the month at 10.30 a.m. I'd like to encourage any woman who might have an ancestor who supported the American revolutionary cause and who wants to make a difference in our community to contact us. We will provide genealogy research assistance. And speaking of genealogy, just a short plug for our annual genealogy workshop. Open to the public, our next workshop will be held on Saturday, March 24th, 10 a.m. at Enfield's main branch of the library. To learn more about our organization, both nationally and here at the local level, 
Um, we have a chapter website, which is simply www.penelopeterryabbeydar.org. And I thank you for this opportunity of speaking about this wonderful organization that I know personally I'm very proud to be a member of. And for the young ladies who are sitting behind me, um, I hope someday that you'll consider joining. Many of our current members were at one time Girl Scouts, Brownies, and Scout Leaders. And thank you so much. Thanks, Jean. Before you um, uh, get up from the table, just want to check uh, if there's any questions or comments from the council. Councilman Arnone. On genealogy study, do, do, uh, is that open to the public? Or, or, or do you have to be a member that wants to uh, trace back their, their roots, since it's such a large database you have? The workshop is open to the public. It is, so they can go in there and, and try to find, because uh, that's, that's got to be huge if it's compared to uh, what's in Salt Lake City. That's uh, Yes, yes it is. Um, our Washington, D.C. facility is open to the public. Um, of either gender may go in and take advantage of our enormous collection of books and manuscripts and um, files, microfilm, and so on. Um, and, and even online? Because you said you'd help people also to, to come in and try to find out <laughs> if they had the uh, ancestry. Do you have it on, online? Are you uh, available to the local chapters? Um, we don't per se help people. Um, let's see. We do have a professional genealogist among our members mm -hmm. um, who is able to lend assistance. Um, we certainly do help the ladies who are interested in joining mm. um, with their genealogy and their d documentation, which is uh, needed. Um, but the, the records themselves are not available to the public online right now. Oh, not yet. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tom. Councilman Kensler. Uh, so the workshop for the 24th sounds like uh, for a person that is interested in, re in getting into genealogy would come to that free seminar. Oh, yes, it is and, free. And learn tips on how to go about doing it themselves? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to clear that. Thanks. Yes. Any, the public is welcome to come. We just ask that um, you let us know in advance to make a reservation <coughs> because it's very well attended and we want to make sure that we have enough seats for everyone. Anybody Anyways. else? Jean, thank you for uh, being here this evening and uh, want to congratulate you and all the members of, uh, of your chapter on your 90th anniversary. And it was, uh, it was nice to be invited to uh, the celebration on Saturday and uh, to see the history there and, and to get to meet uh, your members and, and their family and friends and, uh, and to see the good work that has been done by the DAR over the 90 years here in Enfield. So congratulations on your anniversary as well. Thank you. Cindy? Thank you. Thank you, Jean, for coming tonight. And thank you. Um, uh, Scott, we <clears throat> did have the uh, privilege of having our mayor attend um, our anniversary celebration. I'm also a member, a proud member of the DAR, and, and it was nice to have Scott come and spend some time. Uh, we had a slideshow that was put together by um, Kelly, and Kelly Davis did a phenomenal job. And um, again, to see the camaraderie, to share in the excitement, um, and to have the proclamation that you so eloquently delivered was very nice. So thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for your uh, time, Jean. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gopin. Thanks, Jean. Have a great night. <laughs> and uh, we have um, some additional special guests. And uh, I will be calling forward three members of... Uh, Girl Scout Troop 10759 for presentation. I'd like to call forward Haley Grape, Lily Johnson, and Brittany Olson. And uh, I have been told that they have a presentation on energy 
It's part of their junior Girl Scout journey to uh, achieve their bronze award. And um, if I got any of that wrong, please correct me, okay? So welcome uh, to the Enfield Town Council. And uh, when you're ready, There we go. Good evening, Mayor Copen. First off, we would like to thank you and the Town Council for giving us this opportunity to present to you. Next, I'd like to introduce two fellow Girl Scouts and myself. My name is Brittany, and to my left is Lily, and to my right is Haley. We are Junior Girl Scouts from Troop 10759. This year, our troop decided to work towards our Bronze Award, which is the highest award a junior can earn. One requirement is we need to complete a journey project. Our journey project is called It's Your Planet, Love It. Since September, we have been learning and doing all kinds of things related to energy sources, energy savings, and recycling. To earn our journey patch, we need to complete an, an energy audit on a building we chose and present the results of the audit. To do this, our data team had to put in the results of the audit in the computer program called TRAIN. This is why we are here tonight. We prepared a PowerPoint presentation which will help all of you in the TV audience better understand where we've been and where we're going on our journey. With that, I'd like to pass on this presentation to Haley. Hi. We did many different things this year in Girl Scouts. We've gone to see Mr. Moriarty. We Haley, can, part, if you can just tilt the microphone, um, pull it towards just so that we capture your voice. Hi. We did many different things this year in Girl Scouts. We've gone to see Mr. Moriarty. We learned a lot about saving energy, and he even made a space here made out of soda cans. He uses giant solar panels. And a, and a roof that, that makes snow fall off of it. The roof even lasts 100 years. He saves a lot of money by doing and using these things. To save energy and oil, he rides his bike everywhere or takes the bus. We also made clothes out of recycled material. The recycling club, club and the art students at Enfield High put on a fashion show in 2011. They show us pictures of the fashion show and the clothes look really cool. They also saw some dresses and they look so real. We also got to go to the trash museum and learned a lot about recycling. We made a Christmas tree and ornaments from scraps of Winter Storm Alfred. We learned how to upcycle, which is turning something that you might throw away into something useful again. For instance, when we started our journey, we made, we made tote bags made out of old t-shirts. We made energy pledges and most of us pledged to shut the lights off when we don't need them on. Also, to shut the TV off when we aren't watching it. We learned about light. We learned about light bulbs, and our results were that LED bulbs saved the most money. We learned about insulation too. We had so much fun doing these things. During our adventure of energy, we did an energy audit on the Enfield Public Library. We learned all about how they heat the library, cool it, and even how it was made. <coughs> all from Mr. Dutcher and Mr. Gar. I probably couldn't even count how many valuable facts we learned about that one building, let alone the whole town. Now here to talk about some of the data we collected from our data team is Lily. Hello, my name is Lily. As Brittany said, I'm going to talk to you about our troops finding the library. There are many different ideas for an energy audit project, but we picked the library because it's a public building and we knew that we would be able to get help from the town employees. <coughs> How did we do the audit? Our troop interviewed the two town employees about Libraries energy use. Mr. Dutcher and Mr. Gar. Our data team took the data we collected and entered it into the train energy program. The results we are presenting today are based on the output of the energy program. Alexa, Kara, Julia, and Sarah were members of our data team. We compared energy use at the library with two other types of buildings, an efficient building and an average building in the region. For each building, we compared energy used, dollars spent, and carbon dioxide emissions. Mr. Dutcher and Mr. Gar 
helped us by giving us the tour of the library. We discovered that the library pays $75,244 for <coughs> each year e for energy. This is a very high amount of money. The Enfield Library pays $3.76 per square foot for energy. The facility average is $2.42. And an efficient facility pays a dollar, $1.31. The library is over the cost for both an efficient and an average facility. The largest percent of the library's energy cost goes to heating at 30%. The second largest percent goes to cooling at 28%. Followed by lighting at 16%. The Enfield Library produces higher carbon dioxide emissions than an efficient facility and an average facility, as shown on the screen. We also learned about writing formal acknowledgement letters to the people who helped us with our project. Our acknowledgement team included Laura and Alyssa, advocating for our library. Mr. Dutcher and Mr. Gar shared with us a few improvements that could be made. The town could install efficient double pane windows to replace the old single pane windows. The town could also install an efficient cooling system to replace the 44-year-old system. The town could, too, install <coughs> south-facing solar panels to reduce electricity costs. And finally, the town could install an automatic system to control temperatures in town buildings. Now Haley is going to talk about why we should care about energy use. Why we should care. Because this is our world and our future. We will do our best to use resources while Wisely. Wisely, and to make the world a better place. The Girl Scout Law. Okay. Let's tell us the pictures. These are some pictures that we have, that we took. Picture one is us. Brittany, Brittany, if you can just move the, the microphone, point it towards the person that's speaking. Thanks. Picture one is us doing our audit at the library. Picture two is me in my hat uh, when we were at the fashion show night. <coughs> Two and four, three and four are of my friends in our Girl Scout troop also at the fashion show night. Five is us at the trash museum. Six is us at the boiler room in the library. Seven is our Christmas tree that we made out of scraps from Winter Storm Alfred. This is our whole troop, Troop 759. I mean, 10759. Okay, there's one. A special thanks to our troop leaders. A special thanks to our troop leaders, Mrs. Hart, Mrs. Boynton, and Mrs. DePiro, and our parents and volunteers. People who taught us about energy, Mr. Dutcher, the library director, Mr. Gar, Supervisor of Building and Grounds, Mr. Moriarty, and Field Resident, and the Town Council, of course. That's it. That's it. All right. <laughs> Are you ready to uh, respond to any questions from the Council? I think so. Where? Any any uh, questions or comments? Councilman Bosco. That was a great presentation. Thank you. And you girls should be proud. Thank you. Comments, questions? Councilman Arnone. Yeah, I say the same thing. Great. You found, uh, would you find uh, the, with the uh, other buildings in town, you'd like to help us out a little bit and maybe continue this a little bit? Because <laughs> I tell you, this is a, a very great job, and I, and I uh, appreciate you going out and I hope you learned something. and. And I know every dime we can save, and it's quite a considerable amount just in, uh, in, in energy efficiencies. And those room temperatures, huh? It's just like school. It's always hot in those buildings. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Nelson. I just have one question. Did you bring any Girl Scout cookies? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people would buy right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. What, any other questions or comments? Um, then I'll just I'll have the the final comments uh, to the three of you thank you very much for coming on up here and, and making the presentation uh, and to your entire troop and and your parent uh, leadership within the troop 
Uh, thanks for contacting us. Thanks for going out and, and doing the work at the Central Library. Uh, meeting with Mr. Moriarty. He's a regular uh, visitor here to council meetings and uh, always giving us great advice and information on, on clean energy and, and ways to, to save our resources. And uh, appreciate the participation as well of, of Mr. Dutcher and Mr. Gar to help you out. So um, it would be nice if the um, town can actually get your presentation so we can uh, look further into the efficiencies of the Central Library. And um, because we know it's an old building and we know it's uh, not the most efficient, but um, <coughs> you gave some great information this evening, and I'm sure it took you a lot of, a lot of time and a lot of hard work. But uh, really appreciate your visit uh, here this evening. And uh, best wishes as you move forward in, in the ranks of Girl Scouts. And uh, whatever the town can do to help you further um, your goals within Girl Scouting, let us know. So it's a great partnership. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Matt, maybe we can hire them for the next um, energy efficiency study. Um. <laughs> one day, you're going to be sitting up here, one of you, <laughs> or all of you. Um, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is public communications and petitions. If there's anyone in the audience wishing to address the council, I ask you to please raise your hand. I will call on you ask you to come forward to the front table. Please state your name and address for the record. We ask that you keep your comments to no more than five minutes and that you refrain from the use of personalities. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council this evening? Mr. Young, come on up. While, uh, while Buster is making his way up, um, I also have the inevitable task of timing you. So um, if you do start approaching the, the five minute mark at four minutes, 30 seconds, I will politely interrupt you and ask you that, uh, let you know that you got 30 seconds remaining. Buster, welcome. Pitchers Hello. and catchers reported yesterday. You've got to be a happy man. What was that again, please? The pitchers and catchers reported yesterday. You are a happy man. Uh, yes. Um, Buster Young, Laurie Drive. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the council. I'm here tonight for a surprise I got at Fermi High School Saturday afternoon when I went out to do my daily walking around the football field. I parked the car in the area of the path to go to the fields. I got past the first softball field and just before the second softball field, I started seeing droppings on a uh, dropping on the sidewalk. I says, "Oh my gosh, somebody must have been walking the dog." And he left his droppings. Well, I walked a little further. I got my biggest surprise. There was a lot of droppings. The geese might uh, must have been there. I don't know if you're aware of it. But the sidewalk is in terrible shape of droppings. I know those geese must have come from that pond. I'm only guessing because when I've been walking out there, I have seen them down the back of the football field uh, over the fence. There's a uh, barn and there's a little barn, a uh, pond. I think they must have come from there. I'm, just bringing this to your attention, I don't know if anybody told you, but something's going to have to be done about those geese because if they come once, they'll be back again. And it didn't look good uh, to try to uh, walk to there. And then when I wanted to go back to my vehicle, I says, I'll walk the field. Well, I found out they also were on the field. They must have been there to eat grass. And, and, but they did most of their drop-ins on the sidewalk. Also, I got another surprise today. Are we still having the blight situation? Brainerd School now has a nice big hole in one of the windows upstairs. 
I hope someday we can see something done to that school because it is an eyesore to this town. It's right on the main drag and it gives us a bad reputation in this town. I went to that school. I know what the school, I liked it, but I hate to see the way it is today in that bad shape. And I thank you to the council for hearing my concern. Thank you, Buster. Yes, I'm happy for the baseball season. <laughs> Hope springs eternal, right? Right. Public communications. Mr. Moriarty. I am Steve Moriarty, 24 Cedar Drive here in Enfield. Uh, I'm also a member of the Clean Energy Committee, but I'm speaking as a private citizen. Uh, one thing that Buster just touched on is uh, the image of Enfield, and we have a gem right here, uh, right outside our door, uh, the freshwater pond. And there's a few projects going on, and uh, once we complete them, it'll bring uh, uh, people to the center of Thompsonville is something I like because uh, I've been riding my bike in the absence of winter. Uh, I like to ride around the park there, you know, make that my destination and go around it and, you know, stop into one of the local stores, uh, you know, buy a snack, whatever I'm going to do. Enjoy this part of town. It's a great part. Uh, I believe uh, anything that's done with that uh, part of town is a great investment. It will help to to uh, better the image of Enfield for anybody that comes around. Uh, also, I'd like to praise the, the Girl Scouts for the work they've been doing. They're the next generation. They're going to be taking over for us, and I, I hope they continue to do all the good work that they're doing. They're very uh, interested, and they want to learn, and when they visited my house, they're very respectful, and it was a, a pleasure to have them there. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Public communications, Mr. Leonard. Town Council, staff, my name is Reg Leonard and I live at 42 Fairfield Road, Enfield, Connecticut. It looks as if I got a lot of notes here, but they're all good notes. They're all good things to say. I live at 42 Fairfield Road. I'm here tonight for I'd like to acknowledge the accomplishments of the Enfield High School junior and varsity basketball teams and their coaching staff. Tomorrow night at Enfield High School, there's a 5.30 junior varsity game and a 7 o'clock varsity game that will finish their regular season. The junior varsity has a record of 16 and 1. The varsity has a record of 19 and 0, 35 and 1 for the town of Enfield. An outstanding record that any team would love to emulate. Now tomorrow night, and I'm not jinxing the team because Mr. Crowley brought it up to you last week <laughs> on, on saying that he told you that they were going to go for the, their, their league championship, which they did win the next night, and that they won an undefeated season. The varsity has a chance to become the first team in Enfield High School to go undefeated, 20-0 in their regular season. Now, that's a, quite an accomplishment. The junior varsity has only one loss, and he avenged that loss to a double A, to a, a single A team, up one division last week. So 35 and one for both these teams. The varsity captured the NCC crown last week. The ratings of the state, according to the Hartford Current and Sports Don Comp, have four divisions. You have double A, L, I mean double L, L, 
medium and small. Enfield's in the small, in the medium division. They are ranked number one out of 44 teams in the state of Connecticut. Number seven, the whole town, the whole state of Connecticut, number seven. That's all the divisions. The varsity also leads the state in defensive maneuvers to allow them to only allow 38.1 points per game. They have 17 very good students, gentlemen. They have two great coaches, and Mr. O'Connell and Mr. Zalucki. And tomorrow night at senior night also, where five seniors are being honored. They've been with the team for four years. So I think if you have any time, any of you from the town, from the council, that we should have a turnaway crowd tomorrow night to go see Enfield High basketball. Their leadership, their contributions to the town have been great. I, uh, basketball has always been my game and I would like to see a turnaway crowd tomorrow night. And basically, that's what I wanted to tell you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Reg. Good to see you. Thanks for all the great news. Public communications. Anyone else? Mr. Myjack. Uh, Jeff Myjack, 3 Sharp Street. Uh, first, congratulations to the Junior Girl Scouts. Great presentation. We've got an opening on the Clean Energy Committee, if any of them are interested. <laughs> um, the intersection of Post and Post Office Road, it's becoming worse and worse and worse. It's just nothing but pot coals. Can we get that thing fixed? I know Mr. Bosco has been asking about it for months, and uh, it's just getting to be too much. Um, lastly, on Saturday, the Several members of the Clean Energy Committee will be attending a conference in Weathersfield for Energy Task Force. Uh, we'll be talking about performance contracting, and we're also going to be meeting with the town of Vernon and some of their officials um, to discuss energy districts. Uh, Vernon is one of the few towns in the state that's looking at uh, energy industrial districts, and we're going to look to see what they're doing and see if it's something that might fit here in town. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Public communications? Anyone else? Thank you very much for your comments. And before we go to public communications, just another shout out to the Girl Scouts. I got an email from a resident at home who says, Hi, Scott, the Girl Scouts are doing a great job. I am so impressed. Make sure you tell them the home audience thinks that they're great. So <laughs> congratulations. The world technology today, you're totally connected. So. <laughs> And that's from Gina Sullivan, so some of you may know Gina, but uh, she wanted to let, let you know that you did a great job in your presentation. Uh, Councilman Communications, Councilman Kensler. Uh, through the mayor to Matt, um, I know uh, we spoke earlier, uh, your email was down today, uh, so I couldn't connect with uh, Jeff and his question about the lighting project. Um, but if you could just speak to that during... Um, town manager communications so that he can have his answer um, do we have uh, th through Scott uh, to Matt do we have any updates today on the most current numbers for the recycling and uh, a note to let you know that the uh, the wires are still all down I did another drive this week if we could uh, put a little pressure on them and um, in regards to the Brainerd School, if we could uh, have a discussion about what we can do as a town. I know it's a private property now, um, but Buster's right. It does have some openings in the building. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Councilman Mangini. Thank you. <clears throat> Just wanted to uh, make a couple comments first. The first, readers are going to be receiving their certificates this Thursday at Center Square, at the Enfield Square Center of the stage. Um, these are for the children that have reached the achievement of um, 
reading their first books. And I believe there's over 80 uh, children that will be recipients. So this is something that we would encourage uh, people to come and support, especially the accomplishments of the young children. Uh, also, I do want to make a comment about Donna Street. Um, <clears throat> speed limit sign, I believe, says 30. Most speed limit signs where there are children should read 25, if I'm not mistaken. The sign itself has been defaced. I'd like to see that corrected. And also, my observation, and many people on that street have observed, that people are not traveling 25, 30, even 35 down that road. And there are uh, numerous children that do, you know, unfortunately, their toddlers run out into the road or a ball goes in the road. I'd like to ask through um, Scott to our town manager if perhaps we could do some sort of uh, speed monitoring, maybe send a car out. Um, it's, it's very bad because you have a good number of, of children on that road. So um, if we could look into that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry, Matt. Uh, through Scott to, to Matt, uh, had a conversation at Buster's house uh, last week, took care of that um, uh, delivery collection thing that was going on in the road, blocking the road. But there are two no parking signs the town has out there by Whitacres, uh, the fields, uh, one of which needs to be replaced. You can't read it anymore. Thank you. Councilman Communications. Turn my microphone off. Councilman Hall. Um, through Scott to Matt, can we get an update on the post and post office? I know Joey's brought it up in the past. Maybe you have an update for us. Thanks. Councilman Communications. Councilman Arnone. I do something a little different tonight. Uh, Kevin, can you throw a slide Tom. for me, please? Thank you. Um, for the people in the audience, uh, Enfield Hua sends care packages to soldiers who are currently deployed or registered on their website. And I have their website down on the first, uh, can we throw the first one up? Uh, this is new technology for us today, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, you'll see the website up there for the people at home, they can write that down. Um, there's a drop box located uh, for uh, items at the Village Center at 100 High Street, or you can go right to Lori Gates, which she spearheads this whole uh, operation at 3 Yale Court. Um, you know, make any checks too payable to Enfield Hua. And if you can give me slide two, it's an example of some of the items that they will, uh, they actually need um, to send to the troops. And it's uh, anything from instant coffee, powdered creamer, granola bars, no chocolate, nothing that can melt because uh, it will. Um, so any kind of cookies that won't melt, gummy mints, pop tarts, uh, the foot powder, non aerosol deodorants, uh, eye drops, and you can imagine all these things uh, over and above coming in from us. And if, if you really want to do anything uh, or anything on this list and drop it off, it'd be much appreciated. They package it, they send it out to the troops that are registered. So they're usually local troops in this area that, that receive these care packages. Um, and of course money because uh, they have to ship these via the mail and it does get expensive so if you could either shoot a check over to them or drop any of these items off um, uh, I, I know the troops will uh, appreciate it thank you thank you Tom and thank you Kevin councilman communications deputy mayor Nelson through the mayor to the town manager uh, first question is um, the school gyms are they open on a day that the school is not? There was an incident, I guess, today where um, there was a scheduled basketball practice at one of the schools, and I guess the janitor was not so pleasant about it in front of the children, and he was told that he couldn't use the gym even though he had it reserved for today, and I guess the door was slammed in his face, and the door, school's closed. That's it. So if we can... school? JFK. You'll be getting a call on that in the morning. That's why I had to step out. I apologize. Huh? Okay. And then um, I, I just I have discussed this with you earlier, Matt, about Salerno Drive and Rebecca, the road coming apart up there. I just want the residents to know that I did bring it up, and we are going to take a look at that. And then, again, Laughlin Road, where the dirt connects to the pavement, the pothole came back within... 24 hours I, I if we could do some more of a permanent patch for the winter I, I don't know what but 
And then uh, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and move items D and E to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Second. Motion by Deputy Mayor Nelson, seconded by Councilman Mangini to move the items to miscellaneous. Any discussion? Sensing none, by show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed? Items have been moved to miscellaneous. And then uh, I'd just like to thank the 4th of July committee for a great time Saturday night. The dinner dance they had was wonderful as always and uh, look forward to the actual festivities That's in right. July. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? I've got uh, just a couple items. Um, first of all, um, Reg, uh, thank you very much for um, your update on Enfield High School basketball. Councilman Crowley had asked me to um, give some details, but, but you far surpassed what I could have uh, mentioned for them uh, for both tomorrow evening and the tournament beginning on Saturday. So hopefully we get a, a, a good Enfield crowd out to uh, support uh, the boys as they go for an undefeated season at the varsity level and, and, a, and a stellar season at the JV level. Um, so again, that uh, Enfield High School basketball tomorrow, Wednesday, the uh, 22nd of February, 5.30 JV, 7 o'clock varsity. I believe they're playing Windsor Locks. And um, Saturday uh, starts the tournament and Enfield High School will be hosting uh, the first round of the tournament on Saturday. And I believe those times are 5.30 and 7 as well. So, but Reg, thank you so much for uh, giving uh, a well-deserved plug. Um, I want to um, congratulate Ryan Galovich. Ryan uh, is Enfield's newest Eagle Scout and had the opportunity to attend his Eagle <coughs> ceremony this uh, past Sunday. And uh, Ryan's mom works for the town of Enfield in, uh, in our planning department. And uh, the ceremony was held over at the Hazville Methodist Church and uh, just always amazes me the amount of work that they have to do to get to the point of being an eagle and uh, seeing uh, the pictures from the project and, and understanding uh, the process that they have to go through to get to an eagle. And uh, so to Ryan, congratulations uh, to his entire family and, and to the troop as well. Um, Monday, um, a week from yesterday, Monday, February 27th, is uh, the town council and, and town staff's uh, quarterly public information meeting. Uh, this quarter, uh, we are in District 1. Uh, the meeting will be held at, at Parkman School beginning at 7 p.m. So Monday, February 27th, 7 p.m. at Parkman School, our quarterly public information meeting which is a uh, open question and answer format. And uh, we've held them for four plus years. Uh, the last meeting was probably the best attended. So hopefully we can get a, uh, a good crowd out as well for some constructive dialogue on any issue. It's uh, open format. And then um, my last item is um, on Sunday, March 4th uh, from 2 to 4 p.m at the Powder Mill Barn on South Maple Street. Um, Mrs. Alice Allen um, will be holding a reception commemorating the completion and the official release of the book, uh, Colonel Augustus G. Hazard, the Hazard Powder Company, the manufacturer of black powder. And again, that's Sunday, March 4th, two to four at the Powder Mill Barn. And this book, um, was being written by her husband, uh, Ed Allen. And Ed uh, recently passed away. And uh, Alice um, took up the writing and, and has completed the book. And uh, so the council's all in invited. The community is invited. Come on out to uh, the Powder Mill Barn, South Maple Street, Sunday, March 4th from 2 to 4 PM uh, for the uh, reception and the official release of the book. And uh, I'm sure you can get um, buy a book and get Alice to sign, sign one it. for you. So you've got a limited edition copy. So, um, so that that's great news that uh, she was able to uh, to finish uh, her husband's book, and uh, has a a nice uh, 
nice picture on the cover. I don't know if um, if they can zoom in, but it shows a picture of the book itself, and it uh, it's in front of I think is the Powder Mill Barn. Um, so they're, they're trying to zoom, but it, it's very small. So yeah. There we go. So Sunday, March fourth. That completes my comments. Anyone else? Then uh, next item would be the town manager's report and communications. Matt. Good evening. Uh, let me address uh, some of the uh, questions that came up, uh, starting with the easier ones first. Uh, recycling. Uh, the latest numbers that we had uh, recalculated for January, because I think uh, at the last meeting we had talked about the number being around 14% increase. Um, in actuality, that number is a 28% increase. So, um, you know, we're still cautiously optimistic that, you know, we're going to see a, a significant increase. Uh, hopefully this is just beginning and, you know, uh, February will reflect the same, same large increase uh, that we saw in January. So um, keep, you know, track of that and let you know at the end of February. Uh, Brainerd Road, or excuse me, uh, the Brainerd School, um, I know town staff has cited the owner of that facility. Um, I don't know where it stands in the enforcement aspect of it, but uh, I know we have uh, written paper to uh, the owner to try to get that corrected. And uh, the last thing is on uh, Post Office Road, Post Road, um, you know, the solution, you know, ultimately the solution is the reconstruction of, of that road. That's, I think, 2014, actually, when that, that's going to be. Um, you know, what we're doing right now, because the uh, plants aren't open, we're just putting cold pass in there. That lasts, that intersection, maybe a half a day, a couple hours at, at best. Um, but, you know, we will, again, let the DPW know. They'll go out there and they'll throw it in there. Um, but it's just something that they have to continually go out and, and you know, put the cold patch in there. There's just not much, I mean, at this point in time, there's not a lot you can do that intersection until we get to the uh, hot mix open up. When do, when do the plants open, Matt? Well, typically that's, that's around 1st of April to, to mid-April. Um, you never know if, if we start having sustained, you know, uh, temperatures above 40, 45, I think is what they look at. It could open sooner. Um, you know, I have uh, talked to uh, our... Uh, acting uh, public works director about putting together uh, a project early in the the spring to get a skim coat put over that which will at least tie it all together until you know foreseeable future until we can get a reconstruction done councilman bosco matt is there something we could do to move that up on schedule a little bit or even if we reconstruct, you know, dig it out and just do a, a certain area because mm -hmm. every year it's been doing this well, that, and then we're going to put the skim coat and it's going to come right back right. Yeah, we, next fall. We might be able to do like what we did there on um, Raffia Road there in front of the plaza two years ago where we actually uh, ground down the area and then did the overlay. Um, again, just, and, and that may be what the end result is. Like I said, I just, I talked to the, the director, acting director, about looking at that project, so. So when I say skim coat, maybe a grinding in a skim coat. I'm, yeah, I'm just not sure. The, the problem is the water. <laughs> yeah. See, they're, they're always full of water, so as soon as it freezes, it <clears throat> blows it right back out. Right. And that, that's, again, the long-term issue is, is rectifying the drainage issue there within uh, that area. So until that happens, we're going to have this. Um, so it really is a matter of, of not trying to throw good money after bad money. Do you know the minimum to keep it in place until we can get the the full project done? And again, you know, in terms of where that falls on on the final, you know, it could be 2014, it could be into 2013, it it could be into the next road project. It just depends upon you know how quickly the designers get done and how much money's left when we get there. So, it's just pretty main travel. Oh yeah, no, no. It's highly traveled area. Yep. Yep. Uh, the only other thing, uh, real quick, and we'll be sending out information, um, uh, the, the town did uh, receive funding from the state for our still meadow water project. If you remember, uh, we had a contamination issue out there, and we're under a consent order from the uh, state of Connecticut to um, 
correct the situation. The state uh, finally did come through with the grant that they promised to pay for the engineering and oversight of this. Um, we've kicked that off. One of the first things we will be doing is having a public meeting for those residents. Um, we are working right now on getting the final date. It's going to be towards the end of March, possibly that last week, um, out at most likely Hazardville uh, Elementary School. Um, we'll be sending out a letter to all the residents very shortly as soon as the details are finalized. And obviously, we'll let council know when that meeting is as well so you can be in attendance. That's all I had. Thank you, Matt. Any questions for Matt? Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item, Town Attorney's Report and Communications. Welcome, Maria. Good to Thank see you. you. Mayor, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. No formal report tonight. We know that uh, Kevin is away on a uh, vacation with his family because it's school break. Um, anyone have? And so thank you for being here. My pleasure. You're welcome. Any questions for Maria? Any comments, questions for the town attorney? Thank you. Uh, thank next you. item, reports of special committees of the council. Any reports from committees? Sensing none, we'll move on to um, old business. Appointments, uh, town council appointed. I believe they all remain on the on the table. <coughs> Appointments town manager uh, appointed, council approved. Is there a motion to remove item 12 from the agenda so from moved. the table? So Sorry. Moved. Item 12 from the table. Deputy Mayor Nelson, Second. seconded by Councilman Hall. All those in favor of removing the item from the table? Those opposed? Items been removed from the table. Matt? I am uh, recommending the reappointment of Robert Stefanik. Okay, the town managers made a recommendation to reappoint Robert Stefanik to the Fair Rent Commission. It, motion to approve the town manager's recommendation by Councilman Kensler, seconded by Councilman Hall. Any discussion? Sensing none by a show of hands. All those in favor? Those opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations, Commissioner Stefanik. Matt, any other items? Nope, that is all. Uh, the Community Center Study Committee remains on the table. Property transfer agreement stays on the table. Uh, property maintenance ordinance, uh, because Councilman Crowley and Councilman Stokes are not here, we're going to um, take up that issue at our first meeting in March and hopefully everyone's going to be here so we can finalize. Transfer of funds for assessment and tax collection stays on the table. Uh, we move to old business and there is, uh, there's no old business. We've got the two openings on the beautification committee but no pending applications. That moves us to items for discussion. Uh, there is no consent agenda. Uh, we have a vacancy on the Commission on Aging, uh, but would need uh, applications for that. Uh, there are no town manager appoint appointments council approved. And uh, the remaining two items have been moved to miscellaneous. So we move to miscellaneous. And uh, first item on uh, under miscellaneous is a discussion resolution request for transfer of funds for pre-referendum work for high school consolidation, $125,000. Resolved that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. To account 31008743 Enfield High School Expansion, Construction Services, $125,000. From account 31008722, Streetlights, Construction Services, $95,000. And account 31008138, Annex Refurbish, Construction Services, $30,000. Certified the funds are available. Lynn Nenny, Director of Finance. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Mangini, seconded by Deputy Mayor Nelson. Uh, Matt. Yeah, just uh, real briefly, uh, a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, the question that Council Member uh, Kinsler had asked about that I clarify, there was a question regarding where the uh, the money or the, the project that we're transferring, transferring money from the streetlight account. 
that was actually a CIP that was created, I want to say six, five or six years ago, for the town to purchase the street lights, which we did. And there was approximately 130 some thousand, 138,000 or some number like that, that was left. Um, mm -hmm. Of yes, course, we purchased all our lights, so that project's going to be closed out. Um, we are moving some of the money into this. The remainder is going to be part of our uh, uh, North Main Street uh, freshwater pond streetscape. So we left money there. This, you know, there was some confusion that possibly we we're taking money from a DOE grant. Um, that's not the case. This is from the purchase of the street lights. Um, the other piece of this is that uh, this is an early estimate, 125,000 for the pre-referendum work with the uh, architect. Um, they are right now, actually, we're in the process of finalizing selection of the architect. We'll start as soon as uh, the uh, firm is selected, start the negotiations and the scoping of the project, which we hope to do within a week. Um, and so if, if we need additional money, I'll have to be coming back to council for that at you know, a future uh, council meeting. Thank you, Matt. Anyone have any questions or comments uh, for Matt on this transfer? Councilman Hall. Uh, just a quick question, Matt. We're RFPing for that, uh, the architect company? Yeah, the RF we, we did an RFQ. Okay. Um, that was opened uh, January 27th. Uh, we then shortlisted through uh, the selection criteria. I want to say it was five firms. And uh, Art Pond Grants, uh, John Cabibbo, I can't remember who else. There was two or three other individuals that were part of that, that committee that then sat down had the uh, firms come in, do a presentation, um, scored them, and uh, there'll be a meeting between the uh, firm, uh, myself, uh, Dr. Gallagher, uh, Art Pond Grants. Hopefully we'll get that this week if everything works out to uh, just finalize, make sure that they have a good grasp of what we're looking for and able to do it. As soon as we make that, then we sit down and start doing the scoping with it. So we followed, just to let you know, we followed uh, the, the QBE, QBS, I can't remember what the system is that we use for selection of, of uh, any uh, of the consultants that meets the state criteria. And obviously, you know, we're, we're starting a process that we're seeking, going to be seeking reimbursement from the state. So we, you know, made sure we did exactly it the way that, that uh, they would require us to do it. Tom. Uh, through Scott to Matt, um, will, once this process gets going, will they be part of the, um, the committee in, in the actual meetings, or will they be uh, a funneled information from the meetings? So they will, and, and again, not knowing exactly how many meetings there's going to be, um, you know, within the scoping, you know, they'll say that for this price there will be X amount of meetings. Um, it may not be at every meeting. Um, doing some type of presentation, but they may have a representative there at every meeting. So it, it just depends. Yeah, it, definitely. This, this is something um, just like in the, the post-referendum with the building committee where there's always, you know, something, you know, being generated by the, the architect's firm or the engineering firm. It'll be very similar to this. Any further questions or comments for Matt? Sensing none, uh, roll call, please. Councilman Edgar? Four. Councilman Hall? Four. <coughs> Four. Councilman Kinsler? Four. Councilman Lee? Four. Councilman Mangini? Four. Deputy Mayor Nelson? Four. Councilman Arnone? Four. Councilman Bosco? Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, next item on the agenda is discussion resolution, resolution appointing the pre-referendum high school consolidation committee. Whereas on February 6, 2012, Enfield Town Council created a pre-referendum high school consolidation committee through council resolution number 1683. Now therefore be it resolved that in accordance with resolution number 1683, the Enfield Town Council does hereby appoint the following individuals to the pre-referendum high school consolidation committee. John Kosia and Stephen Sargalski to serve as the school administrator representatives who have been recommended by the superintendent of schools. Bill Schultz and John Daig to serve as the school teacher representatives who have been recommended by the superintendent of schools. Kyle Callagher and Robert Hunto 
serve as the high school student representatives who have been recommended by the superintendent of schools. Art Pongrantz and Gennario Sepluvida. Is that good? Sepluvida. To serve as the town staff representatives who have been recommended by the town manager. Judy Aparisi DeRoche, Maureen Brennan, Randy Daigle, Patrick Droney, and Thomas Vagini to serve as the parent resident representatives who have been recommended by the Town Council Board of Education Strategic Planning Committee. And be it further resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby appoint the following members of the Enfield Town Council and Enfield Board of Education to serve as liaisons for their respective council board. Greg Stokes to represent the Enfield Town Council and Tina LeBlanc to represent the Enfield Board of Education. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Mangini, seconded by Councilman Kensler. Uh, discussion. <coughs> I heard him first. Um, just to give a, a little background to the council, and, and I shared it in an email, um, and that was in your packet. Um, on this past Thursday, um, Councilman Mangini, uh, uh, Tim Neville, and Donna Suzak from the Board of Education and myself, we met and we reviewed through uh, 31 applications that were received from residents that applied uh, for uh, the pre-referendum uh, high school consolidation committee. Um, all the people who applied were well qualified to serve in the position. Um, and uh, and we had a, a tough task and we we had to narrow the 31 down <laughs> to five we feel we achieved a, a really uh, good balance of um, of people from a cross-section uh, from the community that have a lot to offer uh, to this uh, committee and to help um, the town put forward uh, all of the steps all of the processes that we need uh, to bring a, um, a referendum to bear in November uh, for the renovation and expansion of Enfield High School. All of the applications were in your packet, so you could see the folks that um, did apply. But I'm very confident that uh, Judy, Maureen, Randy, uh, Pat, and, and Tom uh, will serve uh, the committee very well and the process very well and represent us uh, in the next stage uh, to bring the project to to referendum and um, and I would just want to thank Cindy uh, uh, Tim and Donna for uh, taking the time to sit down and review the applications as well so um, the folks that weren't selected for the committee I would rec uh, recommend that they stay in tune to the process and if the referendum is successful uh, in November we'll be forming a building committee and a lot of the folks uh, that, that applied have uh, skills that will be very beneficial to the building committee as well. And it will be selecting a larger group of residents to participate at that point in time. Any other discussion? Sensing none, roll call, please. Councilman Edgar. Four. Councilman Hall. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Councilman Kinsler. Four. Councilman Lee. Four. Councilman Mangini. Four. Deputy Mayor Nelson. Four. Councilman Arnone. Four. Councilman Bosco. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. That completes miscellaneous. The next item on the agenda is public communications. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council? Mr. Ballard, as he comes forward, uh, remind you to keep your comments to no more than five minutes. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, I will time you. I will tell you if you approach four and a half minutes. And we ask that you please refrain from the use of personalities. Welcome. Thank you. Bill Ballard, 321 Abbey Road. Just a couple of comments. Uh, I'd like to thank the council for uh, uh, listening to us from the housing authority this evening. And uh, I can see great things happening. A couple of other issues I want to talk about tonight. <coughs> on, on Beach Road, on the right-hand side, as you're coming up the middle road, there's an area of trees that are bent over and whatnot. And if, if we get a terrific storm, I'm afraid some of those trees may cause a problem. And the same thing 
uh, the same situation prevails down in Potter Hollow on the right hand side. It's just before the last turn, there's a lot of trees that are bent over and it looks like they weren't really taken care of. So maybe it's the people on the property have to take care of it, but those are two items that I uh, would like you to have to look into. The third, the third item is, uh, and I meant to tell Councilman Bosco about it. Uh, last Sunday, I was coming down uh, Middle Road and at the intersection of Raffia and Middle and Simon and Post Office Road, that drain is sinking again. And my wife yelled out, look out, you gotta go in the drain. <laughs> <laughs> Not that she's a second you know, backseat driver, but she's right. <coughs> is there any way you can put some kind of a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, one of those things, what do you, what do you call it? Oh, a cone? Yeah, a cone, a cone in there or something. Cause it's really getting low again. And I was wondering, I think there may be an explana explanation, but why that intersection wasn't included in the post office road and town farm road uh, realignment. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Great. <coughs> Thank you very much, Bill. Public <coughs> communications, <coughs> Jeff. Uh, Jeff Majak, 3 Sharp Street. Uh, thank you for clearing up the CIP money for, for the lighting. Uh, if there's any money left in that CIP account for street lights, can we look at uh, replacing the pole in front of Hot Paninis? It's been missing for years, the light pole uh, on Freshwater Drive. Mm -hmm. That corner is real dark, and with that restaurant opening up, I can see some problems coming up. And if we even have some extra money, think about putting LED lights down that street. Um, the other thing is, I don't know if you saw it, Apple Computer announced today, or last night, they're going to be building a new facility down in North Carolina. They're going to be powering it with a biogas fuel cell. That might be something we want to look at for the waste treatment plant, see if we can use our uh, natural resources there to produce some electricity. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Public communications? Anyone else? Thank you very much. Uh, is there any councilman communications? Councilman Lee. All right, just a, just a quick one, and I apologize for uh, my <laughs> near yeah. missing this meeting. Um, from the uh, Cultural Arts Commission, I have a couple items that I want to make the public aware of. Um, some interesting events coming up that um, Enfield Cultural Arts is um, sponsoring or supporting. Uh, first of all, there are a few tickets remaining to a Wednesday, March 7th, um, show down at the Bushnell. Um, Les Mis is in town and the town uh, and the Cultural Arts Commission had procured a uh, limited number of tickets and folks can contact the Recreation Department uh, to purchase those. Um, and secondly, Sunday March 11th at 2 p.m. is a free concert being presented at Fermi High School by the United States Air Force Band of Liberty. Um, they're coming back to Enfield. They've put on a, some great shows in the past. And this one is gonna feature their jazz ensemble, which I think may have um, performed at 4th of July a couple years ago as well. This is a free concert. Again, it's Sunday the 11th at 2 p.m. Fermi High School for the US Air Force Band of Liberty. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Any other councilman communications? What are we going to do at quarter after eight, huh? Ah, <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So by Deputy Mayor Nelson, seconded, seconded, seconded by Councilman Kensler. All those in favor? Those opposed? We are adjourned. Have a good evening. Good night, Barbara and Gina.